I will call to order our regular City of Malden Council meeting of November the 15th, 2021 at approximately 7 p.m. Thank you for being here tonight. I'll let the records reflect all council members are present along with our city administrator, Mr. Madden, our city clerk, Mr. Miller, and our city attorney, Mr. Bishop. Always good to see him here. Gives me someone to pick on. And various department heads. Appreciate y'all being here along with our citizens. Uh, and anyone online, we welcome you also via Zoom. If you're watching online type thing, we appreciate y'all being here. Our invocation tonight and our Pledge of Allegiance will go be led by Mr. Platt. Let us pray. Our kind, gracious Heavenly Father, we once again come before you, thanking you for the many blessings you've bestowed upon all of us. Father, we ask you for forgiveness of our many sins. You know what they are. We don't have to tell you. Father, we ask you to be with each and every family member here tonight. We ask that you be with them going into the Thanksgiving holiday. Give thanks. Help those that are in need, those that are less fortunate. Father, we ask that you be with all of our leaders throughout the world for we're in some trying times. Father, we ask you to be with each and every one of our people in uniform, men and women, military, police, fire, all those in uniform that protect us. Give us the opportunity to be here tonight to discuss this business. Father, we ask that you be with those that are sick, those that are ailing, those that have problems. You know what they are. You can lay thy comforting hand upon them and thy healing hand upon them. Be thy will. Father, we ask that you be with each and every family member here tonight. You know, to go with them as they go to their homes. Be with them as they go through the rest of this week and through the next week for the Thanksgiving season. We ask these things in thy name. Amen. Black. Next item before us is physical year 21 audit presentation. Mr. Madden. Yes, uh, Mayor, members of council, the audit for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2021 has been completed. Uh, and now we'll have a presentation from the city's auditor. Uh, just giving a quick PowerPoint overview of the audit, hitting some of the high points. Uh, let's get to it. All right, I think probably some of you have received the email package of a lot of these documents and Holly has hard copies um, to provide to you later. Uh, so uh, if you would want to flip through the old uh, paper version, you will have that as well. Uh, but what we found years ago, um, if we tried to actually cover this page by page, it just didn't go real well. Um, and so of course, you know, like most modern conveniences, we move to a PowerPoint presentation where we try to hit the highlights uh, of the fiscal year 2021 audit. So if you don't mind, uh, we will flip through this PowerPoint, but if there's any questions um, as we go through, I just please feel free to interject. Um, but if you wanna wait to the end, um, that will be fine as well. I need some assistance here. A little bit. All right. Next slide, sorry about that. Um, you know, our responsibility as your auditors is to issue an opinion. Um, we give you reasonable, not absolute assurance because, you know, we don't look at every single transaction. And plus we're looking at things from a materiality perspective. Um, you know, and so what we did, you know, is we issued you a kind of a strange term. It's an unmodified opinion, but that is actually a good opinion because if we had to modify our report, that means there was something wrong. So we would say everything looks good except for something. We really don't want a modified report. All right, next slide. All right, let's look at your general fund, uh, which I know is uh, probably one of the biggest measurement basis that you like to look at. You have unassigned fund balance um, of about 7.4 million. Um, as you can see, that amount grew from the prior year from 6.9. And it was about 63% a 
of 2021 actual expenditures and about 57% of your current year, fiscal year 22 budgeted expenditures. Um, the GFOA, which is the Government Finance Officers Association, they're kind of like the Bible of governments. They recommend a minimum of two months. Uh, so you can see you're really good uh, related to that standard, but you know you also have a city minimum fund balance policy of about 25 to 30 that you want to minimally have. Now, and based on that measurement, you're at 43%. So you, you can see in all those, you're doing very well. Uh, next slide. All right, well, let's briefly uh, look at your revenues. That's it's a nice chart. You notice how it looks like it's generally always going up year over year. Um, your revenues were 17.3 million, and we kind of list the biggest buckets there. Uh, what was interesting, I felt like, is that you actually still saw a very significant increase in the midst of the health pandemic. Um, so you actually increased about 1.3 million in revenue over the prior year. Um, property taxes, the assessed values keep coming in. There's more development, and so you're collecting more there, but even business licenses. Lots of new businesses, um, you know, Popeyes and all these things that are coming in, that generates extra tax revenues as well. Um, as it relates to your budget, uh, you came in about $2 million over budget or 13%. It's in those same categories because remember, in the middle of that, your staff kind of said, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with this health pandemic. We're going to be conservative. And you just kept growing um, even in the midst of that. All right, next slide. Uh, Oops, we lost the expenditures. And it's on the bottom. All right, there we go. Um, so your general fund expenditures uh, were $11.8 million. We kind of list the various functions there, but for most governments, you know, around 40 to 60% is public safety, fire and police. And then you see those other functions. Um, you really kind of really contained your expenditures. They only went up about 200000 or 1%. And that's despite giving, a, you know, a, a, a wage increase of 3%. But remember what happens a lot of times, you're budgeting for a fully um, staffed, you know, and it just doesn't turn out that way. People leave, and by the time you fill a position, and so there's usually some gains there on that front. Um, as it relates to your budget, you came in about $1 million or 8% um, under budget. And so if I'm a council member, that's probably the, the one slide or the bullet point that would probably matter the most to me is if I approved a budget, you know, I would want to make sure Brandon and Holly are adhering to that budget. And if we need to amend it, they need to bring that back to us and we amend it. And so you came in very good stead on that. So remember, you came in above revenues on budget, you came in under on expenditures, and that's when you're able to generate a strong increase in your fund balance. I did wanna note that you did have some transfers out. Uh, remember, you have a lot of capital projects going on. I mean, so because of those projects, you're able to fund um, and, and, and send and support some of those projects from your general fund uh, monies as well. And so we list uh, some of that there that you sent out about 2.2 million for capital projects. Uh, we transferred some to the fire service area uh, for 1.5. Remember, you have to transfer money for the debt service as well. Um, and then you remember, you have to support some of your operations like REC or something. You didn't have a lot of people maybe going to REC and you have to support that um, during those tough uh, health pandemic times. All right, next slide. Well, let's briefly um, look at your other funds. Um, your hospitality uh, fund uh, had a balance of about $1.8 million. Remember, all that's restricted. So just because you have you know, a really good fund balance, you just can't use it for any purpose. Um, you had revenues of $1.4 million, um, expenditures and transfers out of 0.8. Um, and so... Uh, again, there was really nothing that unusual unless other than you kind of built some fund balance, um, you know, during fiscal year 21. Um, on your fire service fund, you have no fund balance because remember, they provide you a fire service area tax levy, and then you charge all your fire people, then you have to support the balance. Whatever the monies that don't come in from the county for their portion of it, you have to uh, subsidize the rest there. And so that's what that slide there is uh, talking about. All right, next one. 
All right, your other funds, this was the one that had a lot of activity. Um, your capital projects fund had approximately 8.6 million in fund balance. But I want you to realize most of that is unspent bond proceeds, debt proceeds, or projects um, that are ongoing. Uh, you had a little bit of revenue coming in from various street paving grants, uh, but the biggest area was in your other financing sources of about 12.5 million. You had transfers in of about 5.1 million. Then you had all these debt issuances uh, for all the various projects. Remember, you sold some property too. Uh, and so you had all that going on this year. And remember your expenditures in that fund. Um, you had a lot on roads. Remember the Rothwell uh, Drive. Remember uh, that intersection there, the public works facility that y'all are moving forward with. You got the pedestrian bridge, the Swamp Rabbit Trail, uh, street scrape, paving projects, and a lot of equipment and vehicles. So a lot of activity um, going on uh, during fiscal year 21. As it relates to your sewer fund, uh, you had approximately 3.3 million in net position at the end of the year. Uh, but only about 600,000 of that is unrestricted. That means it would be available. Um, you had revenues of about 1 million, expenses of 0.8. But remember too, the sewer fund transferred some monies towards this public works facility. It's because it's going to be housed there too. And so it's supporting part of those construction costs um, as well. All right, next slide. All right, the property management fund. Um, you had approximately 2.7 million in net position. Now, I know that seems like, whoa, that's a lot of money. But remember, most of that is property. It's not cash. Uh, what's really unrestricted there is the 0.3 million is unrestricted. The rest of that is tied up uh, into various property. Um, you had a little bit of lease payments coming into here and operating costs, uh, but it was a pretty kind of normal year there. Next slide. Let's briefly look at pension accounting. If you remember, we talked about back starting in 2015 uh, that the GASB, which is the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, uh, it came out with a new ruling that said if you participate in a cost-sharing state plan, every government needs to record their proportionate piece of the asset or liability on your books. Uh, unfortunately, the state of South Carolina pension plans are pretty underfunded. They're in the 50s. Um, and so your portion of that liability increased uh, to 18.5 million from 17.8 million uh, in the prior year. The real driver or the kicker here is not that there's this liability you got to pay tomorrow. That's not going to happen. But what is happening is they're raising your rates. And so that second to last bullet point is the real key is where it hurts Brandon and Holly is every year they're raising it 1%. And that's 1% of all your salaries. They're having to build into that budget. And the, the hope is, is that by fiscal year 24, the last rate increase uh, will kick in. But look at where it will ultimately be. 18.56, 21.24, but that doesn't even reflect that your employees are putting in nine or so percent as well. So that's a lot of dollars going into that pension plan trying to shore it up each year. All right, next slide. Um, just want to briefly look at your capital assets. Uh, the balance there was 39.6 million. Uh, they increased 5.7. Had a lot of additions, um, 8.6 million in additions. And we kind of list um, a lot of those projects again uh, that were uh, some of those are still ongoing, but remember when we capitalize something, we begin to depreciate it over its estimated useful life. So we had additions of 8.6, but then we had depreciation of 5.4, and that's that net, uh, a lot of the net change that's going on there. Um, construction in progress at June 30th, again, we still had a lot of the same projects um, that were we talked about before with the public work facility, streetscape and paving and so forth. Next slide. All right, on the long-term obligation uh, front, uh, you had an increase uh, there of 7.3 million to a total of 14.7. We, we re remind everybody about the four issuances there, uh, 2.8 GEO bond, 2.5 installment purchase revenue bonds. Um, you see the accommodation tax revenue bond and the lease. There was a lot of issuance, but remember those are for those projects. Um, and so it's not like, you know, it's just free to use for whatever. You, you, you've got that money set aside for those ongoing projects. Uh, your legal debt limit is about $10.3 million. 
for which you have about 4.1 in GO bonds outstanding, which leaves you a capacity there of about 6.2. Um, your debt service payments for fiscal year 22, the year that we're in right now, uh, is about 1.4. So remember, if you borrow, you have a mortgage payment, right? Well, that's your mortgage payment uh, for fiscal year 22. All right, next slide. All right, just a reminder about the health pandemic. I think we're on the back end of that, but just a reminder, if it did flare back up, or there's new variants that would kick back in, it can impact you greatly on some of your growth uh, revenues. So again, especially things um, like charges for service like recreation, people will just cut that out. Uh, so you always have to be mindful, and that's why your staff is being very conservative and always knowing uh, what the future holds there. Next slide. All right, um, we did adopt a new standard this year, GASB 84 on fiduciary activities. So we added a new fund related to the firefighters 1% monies and it's in the back of your report. I just wanna let you know, it's not a huge balance but it's restricted for the firefighters. But the GASB believes it's still quote, under the city's governance and it should be in their financial statements. It can't be spent for just any purpose. Always it's the same purpose as what it was spent before. Um, leases is a new standard we have to implement next year, but what they're really doing there is they want leases to be treated like debt. So if you enter into a long-term lease, let's say you, instead of buying a fire truck, a uh, ladder truck, you decided, hey, we're going to uh, get one at a million dollars, but we're going to lease it at 100000 over 10 years, they're going to say you need to set up a liability for a million dollars, and you need to set up a right to use asset for a million. We want you to treat it like debt. Um, so that's kind of what that standard is about. Next slide. All right. Um, you know, if we came across issues, um, you know, one of the things that we look at is we try to look at your controls. Uh, if we saw that bank wrecks or things were not being properly reviewed and approved or if one person was doing it all, it's not only important that I talk to Brandon and Holly about that, it's important that you as a council. Um, know about that as well. And we didn't come across any significant issues there. Uh, a reminder with the ARPA monies that are coming next year, well, the year we're in now, you're going to have a single audit. Uh, you know, uh, almost every government out there is going to have single audits and they've never had them before. Now, you've had some in the past, but it's been a while. Uh, so just be aware that's going to create some new compliance testing and so forth. And it's a possibility with a lot of our governments, there might be some findings because there's some strange rules on complying with some of these federal grants. Um, required communication letter, we also um, issue like a separate letter here. Um, if we had disagreements with Brandon, disagreements with Holly, uh, if there were adjustments we wanted to book and they didn't wanna book them, we'd have to let you know about that. And there's nothing in that letter about that. But we do talk about uh, the implementation of that GASB 84 about the firefighters 1% monies. All right, next slide. Uh, so again, unmodified opinion, that's a good thing. Um, you had strong financial condition. You know, Holly and her staff are really good to work with. Um, they really stay on top of it. Um, the thing I did want to mention to you in the back of the report, when you get it, there's several new funds. Remember that Malden Public Facility Corp? It's a separate column now in the back of your financials. It's a uh, non-major special revenue fund. So you see you know, activity related to that entity because it's literally a component unit in a, in a separate fund in your financial. There's a Malden Foundation, but there's a Firefighters 1% fund. So there's three new funds in the back. So it took a little bit more time for Holly and all of us to work through and get it all that set up the right way on this first year. But I think going forward, it'll get a lot easier. Uh, I'll open the floor for some questions because I know I kind of go quick on this. Uh, could you speak to, thank you for your presentation first off, um, all good news from the city's perspective, both from a management perspective as well as a leadership, but could you speak to more what the Firefighters 1% Fund is for um, public awareness? All right, um, you know, there's the, there's a uh, law in the state where, you know, there's a tax on insurance premiums, um, and that, those monies get allocated to all the firefighters departments throughout the state, but it can only be spent for the betterment of firefighters. It can't be used for normal operating costs. What used to be is that most of those monies were 
managed by the fire department, but they were not showing up in your financial statements because they weren't viewed before as your money because you just couldn't use it for any purpose. The GASB still says you have too much control in that process and we want it to show up in the financial statements, but it does not take away what it can be used for. It still can only be used for the same purposes as before. So what you're gonna notice is a lot of our governments this year, you're gonna see them add in this new fund because most of them didn't show it. There were a few of them showed it as an agency fund, but most did not. So that's what that is. No, Mr. Mayor, members of council, I do not have anything to add. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is a red ribbon proclamation. Uh, just a note there that uh, we had an inquiry on this. We didn't get confirmation back that they wanted to proceed with it. So it might, the dates might sound a little uh, different, but uh, we do want to get it on the record here. So proclamation to allow me, whereas co communities across America have been plagued by problems associated with illicit drug use and those that traffic them. And whereas there is hope in winning the war on drugs through education and reduction in demand, as well as the hard work of organizations such as, such as the Young Marines of the Marine Corps League to foster a healthy, drug-free lifestyle. And whereas governments know that citizen support is one of the most effective tools in the effort to reduce the use of illicit drugs in our community. And whereas the red ribbon has been chosen as a symbol commemorating the work of Enrique Kiki Camarena, a drug enforcement administration agent who was murdered in the line of duty and represents the belief that one person can make a difference. And whereas the red ribbon campaign was established by Congress in 1988 to encourage a drug-free lifestyle and involvement in drug prevention and reduction efforts. Now, therefore, I, Terry Merritt, Mayor of the City of Malden, South Carolina, to hereby proclaim October the 23rd through the 31st, 2021, as Red Ribbon Week in the City of Malden, and urge the citizens of Malden to join me in this observation. In witness thereof, I have hereunto here set my hand 15th day of November 2021. Thank you, Ms. Miller, for getting that to us. Next item before us is our reading and approval of minutes. The first consideration for council is our city council meeting of October the 18th, 2021. Chance to read it. Move for approval. I have a motion for Mr. Matney. Is there a second? Second. Second in stereo for Ms. King and Mr. Black. Any discussion, notations, corrections? Hear none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Hear none, the minutes are approved as submitted. Special call council meeting of October the 18th, 2021. Thank you, Mr. Black, is there a second? Second. Second, Mr. Reynolds. Any discussions, clarifications, corrections? Hear none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Hearing none, the minutes are approved as submitted. Special called council meeting on November the 8th, 2021. Uh, motion for Mr. Black is our second. Second for Mr. Reynolds. Any corrections, adjustments, additions? If I may, council, I would ask you to allow me to propose an amendment to reflect that during the uh, executive session portion of that special council meeting, there was a topic of receiving legal advice as it related to uh, Metro Connect. Uh, our councilman, Mr. Taft Matney, recused himself from that due to professional association. Uh, so if y'all would uh, consider that amendment, uh, I would propose it and ask for a second. Second. Second from Mr. Reynolds. Any discussion? All those in favor of the amendment this proposed say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. 
Again, non diminished are amended. Now we're back to the original call as amended the special council meeting of November the 8th, 2021. Uh, any more discussion? Hearing on all those in favor of uh, the minutes as amended, say aye. 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 <coughs> Those like sign. Hearing none, the minutes as amended is approved. Put all that. <laughs> Thank you. We're now to our first topic of public comment for items on the agenda tonight. I understand no one has signed up. Anyone online, Mr. Madden? Okay, no one online. So, no one has indicated that they would like to speak. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Madden. Uh, report from our city administrator. Mayor, members of council. I uh, just want to remind everyone that we have an employee breakfast Thanksgiving on Wednesday at 9 a.m. at the Cultural Center. Also want to take one moment to recognize Ms. Pat Pomeroy. She was listed as a uh, part of the Women of Influence for the GSA Business Report. Uh, and she is unable to attend the meeting this evening, but she wanted me to share the work that they've been doing on the Christmas parade for this year. Um, the Christmas parade uh, is scheduled for December the 4th at 3 p.m. starting at Malden High. Uh, currently they have 23 um, folks signed up to participate in the parade for this year. Uh, they're working with multiple float companies um, to, to see if there's anyone that is interested in renting a float or being a part of a float for the parade this year. Um, and she wanted me to make sure that that was shared with council uh, about that. Also on their website, they listed the itinerary for the rest of this, this uh, holiday season, including the tree lighting, which will be on December the 2nd. Uh, Breakfast with Santa, which will be on Saturday, December the 4th, along with the parade. Um, that concludes my report. Okay, thank you, Mr. Madden. So reports from standing committees, finance and policy, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The only item I had to report on was the audit, which you guys just, um, we all had a chance to sit and listen through. That was all obviously good news for the city, both um, from past leadership as well as management and for the future of the city. That was a lot of good news. So just in commendation for our finance director as well as our administrator for holding the city um, under budget and on with good fiscal management. Uh, that was the big item that I had, so we covered it already. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Public safety, Ms. King. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have nothing at this time. Thank you. Public works, Mr. Grayling. <coughs> I have nothing at this time. Thank you. Move now, plan and develop, Mr. Matney. Nothing at this time, Mayor. Building codes, Ms. Kuzma. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to let everyone know that 13 new businesses opened in October and the uh, business development department has been busy with inspections and lots of permits. Recreation, Mr. Black. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I'm going to refer this back to Mr. Madden, but I sent all this evening information and called the recreation department and received a complaint from the board. Uh, thank you, Mr. Black, members of council. The Recreation Department was awarded uh, the Recreation Department of the Year. Uh, they had a lot of stiff competition throughout the state. I think it came down to Malden and the city of Myrtle Beach. And, and Malden was selected as the um, Rec Department of the Year. Uh, the Rec Department has had a number of challenges this year, especially with the COVID and uh, managing that and making sure that the athletic program is still able to provide services and opportunities for the residents in Malden, along with the sports center and working to increase membership during the difficult time. Uh, that work will continue, but um, the recreation director, Bart Kamalander, along with the assistant recreation director, Willie Stewart, uh, have done a great job with the staff there and they will actually receive the award next month and we'll have an opportunity to present uh, them to council 
uh, here at a meeting in December. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's all we have at this time, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Black. Next item on our agenda is unfinished business ordinance second reading. Ms. Miller, would you introduce the first item? The ordinance to provide for the annexation of property. This is approximately 10.7 million acres owned by Gail C. Cross and his son, Anthony Oates, and located at 220 Power Circle by 100% petition method to establish a zoning classification of RM1 residential. And this uh, annexation has been requested by Mr. Haven and Mr. Jones for this Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. At this time, I'm going to make a motion to reject this annexation. Motion to reject. Commissioner Haven, second. Mr. Black, any discussion? Uh, I'm sorry. No, I just, um, as my notes were in here, I was recognizing that the um, developer was asking for it to be tabled. What was our reasoning behind a rejection on the annexation? Any discussion, Ms. Cousin, before we do the motion? You don't have to, but if you'd like. Just curious. I don't know why they were asking. They're, they were trying to work some things out. Okay. Um, and the owner, the property owner, was asking for the rejection. Um, that it be tabled. So not that the developer didn't ask that it be tabled, the property owner, because they were trying to, to work some things out. Clarification then is your motion to reject it or a motion to table it? My my motion is to reject the annexation. All right, so we're clear on that. <laughs> motion for us is a rejection of the annexation, uh, which would basically be a fail of the second reading. Oh, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Reynolds took care of my question. See any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to reject the annexation on second reading of the 225 or circle say aye. 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 Those opposed say aye. Like sign. No. Okay, so uh, we rejected the annexation on second reading six to one. Failed annexation. Well, got it. I'm going to stay there. Okay, next item, Ms. Miller. Next item is an ordinance to rezone property consisting of approximately 2.3 acres located at Ashmore Bridge Road and Fort Coles Road and providing an effective tax. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, I'd like to make a motion to take this um, annexation or this uh, rezoning off the table because it was tabled. Actually, I believe it wasn't tabled. We voted to approve the, the motion, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, last meeting was to approve the other property and we didn't deal with the uh, 2.3 acres. I think the motion, I went back through my notes and it appeared the motion was. Uh, okay, I believe. Um, you'll see where it says tabled on. The applicant had made a motion to table in September. And then on November 8th, the applicant requested that the city consider proceeding with the second and final reading of the rezoning of the 2.3 acres on the north side of Ashmore Bridge Road from C2 to RM1. Okay, so. Well, so what you could do would be to make a new motion for 
you have to do that first reading and second reading. First reading, we would, we would have to start the process over again um, if you wanted to make a connection from the first reading. At this time, I'm going to make a motion on first reading to approve the rezoning of the north corner from C2 to RM for an amenity center for the Arden Wood subdivision. Do I have a motion from Ms. Kuzner on for first reading of to rezone 2.3 acres of uh, RM? Got it. Is there a second? Second. Second from Mr. Reynolds. Now any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion for first reading of the rezoning of property located at Ashmore Bridge Road, Fort Shoals Road uh, to RM, say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Hearing none, it's approved on first reading. Let me bring that in. December. Uh, C. Ms. Miller. Motion from the ordinance to repeal and replace Chapter 10, Article 2, with the business license amendment with a revised business license ordinance in accordance with the Business License Standardization Act, Section 202, Act Number 176. Okay, Ms. Kuzner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. At this time, I would like to make a motion to um, approve this business license standardization ordinance on second reading. Make a motion. Is there a second? There's a second, Mr. Black. Is there any discussion? Ms. King. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would just like to remind council that um, it was discussed in the committee meeting the um, between first and second reading, um, our legal counsel um, added some clarification in the ordinance where it comes in regards to the revocation of a business license. And I had also requested that the committee discuss looking at the penalty and for um, consideration to be in line with the uh, municipality standards for the business license ordinance at 5% late penalty versus the 10% that is left in the ordinance, um, which is what the city of Malden currently has. So I don't, I don't think that was discussed in committee. Might've been purposely, but I just wanted to make it council aware and you know, in case we want to make an amendment to change that. Um, it is in the, um, the standard, the standardized ordinance has the 5%. As I mentioned before, the 5% penalty is more in line, with, not more in line, it's what um, federal and state governments charge per month, a 5% late file penalty, as well as um, a lot of the cities in the upstate are reflecting the standard as well. Again, it doesn't have to be amended. I just wanted to make sure everyone was clear that that was not changed um, at the committee level. Thank you. King, for clarification, that was in place of the 10%, which is in there, correct? That is correct. Mr. Hart, you want to speak to that? Good evening, Mayor and Council. David Deerhaug, Director of Business and Development Services. Um, the only thing I'll comment about that is uh, Ms. King already uh, laid it out. I'll just tell you from the Municipal Association who drafted the model ordinance that we've been using as a basis, when they reviewed the difference between what we have in place versus what they recommended in their model ordinance, uh, they said we could keep what we currently have, certainly though their advice would be go to the 5% to be consistent with um, what's in the model ordinance and what they recommend for other municipalities to follow. It also included a processing fee. Did we 
they also included, did they think that should go away, the 10 percent to five, and do away with the processing fee? Um, only f so ours includes a twenty-five dollar processing fee. The model ordinance does not include a twenty-five dollar processing fee. I don't think that they took real issue with the with the fact that we have that. Um, you know, the only thing they would suggest is maybe consider theirs for consistency, but there's not any problem with us having that processing fee. Um, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make um, a motion to amend the original motion to approve the business license standard, standardized ordinance and to amend that motion to include the change of 5% late penalty versus the 10% late penalty. I'll make a motion, Ms. King, to change the late penalty from 10 to 5%. Nothing okay. to do with the processing fee. You're okay with it. To five percent. Is there a second? I think I heard sir second from Mr. Yes, sir. Any discussion? Mr. Black. Yeah, that's why I said put this in line with the state bank regulations. Put the fact that they thought that was the right style. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Black. I, I'm just wondering if there was a reason the ten percent was left in versus um adding in the five percent sounded like you wanted some feedback for me potentially on that um the time 10 percent was just left in because we didn't want to make any subsidence change like that without the direction of council i really can't speak to where the 10 percent came initially my Suspicion is that is probably put in there as an incentive for businesses to not be late um, paying their license fees, but it was left as is unless council directed otherwise. Thank you. So, going from 10% to 5%, is there any financial impact significant, Ms. King? Well, so it does impact the amount of uh, delinquent business license fees that we collect. Obviously, we would expect that that figure that revenue figure would go down based on a five percent fee versus ten percent do we have a significant percentage of late fees in our budget if i may jump in may it, it, it wouldn't be a, an issue as far as budgeting it wouldn't be an issue where we wouldn't be making decisions on what to fund and what not to fund based off the difference in the amount questions comments Ms. King um just a quick comment to um address that question it's probably because it wasn't discussed changing it because it was one of the items that um could have been left at the rate that the city already had in place so to to be in line with the model ordinance that that was one of the items that um we did not have to follow suit with the model if that makes so it's my feelings that that's probably why it was not addressed um, prior to coming to us. Any other discussion? All right. So we have a uh, amendment to reduce <coughs> our late fee penalties from 10% to 5%, which would put us back in line with the Miss Association's model ordinance, I believe. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Opposed? Hear none. Motion to amend carries. All right, we're back to the questions. Now before us is to approve on second and final reading the uh, additional business license standardization ordinance. Any discussion as amended? Hear none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed like sign. Hearing none, the motion to accept the business life standardization order on second reading as amended carries. Thank you, Ms. Kuzner. Uh, new business ordinance first reading, Ms. Miller. 
an ordinance to rezone property consisting of approximately 5.6 acres located at 513 Main Street, providing an effective date. This is the proper date. Ms. Cook. Uh, Ms. Cusick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. At this time, I would like to make a motion to rezone uh, approximately 5.6 acres from R15 residential and C2 general commercial to RM1 residential and C2 general commercial on first reading. Okay, I'll make a motion. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Madden. Any discussion? Yes, Mayor, the, this is a part, that, that's a part, excuse me, not Mayor, I'm sorry. <laughs> that is a uh, component of the developer's due diligence. So uh, we'll know later on as this goes through the process. All right, we'll get discussion, right? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Blatt. Thank you, Mr. Blatt. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Mayor. Can I request a roll call vote? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, all those, we will have a roll call vote <laughs> on the motion to rezone the property at uh, 513 North Main Street to RM Residential and C2 General Commercial. Uh, we'll start with seat one. Keep me in order, Mr. Matney. Aye. Ms. King. Aye. Mr. Craylin. Aye. Mr. Reynolds. Aye. Mr. Black. Aye. Ms. Kuzma. Aye. Mayor vote aye. Seven. No. Those opposed? I don't guess carry. All voted for positive. So motion carries to rezone 513 North Main Street. Uh, thank you, Ms. Coos. This is all for Ms. Miller, right? So we're now to the standing committee. And the committee's uh, MSIP resolution from Mr. Matney. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, move that we approve a resolution pursuant to Section 4 1 170 C, Code of Laws of South Carolina 1976, as amended, consenting to the placement of certain property within the corporate limits of the city of Malden in a joint county industrial business park of Greenville and Anderson counties. Okay, I have a motion from what he said. Is there a second? <laughs> second. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. I know the council's ever said, go ahead and repeat that. Don't know that I can do it as well. Any discussion? Hearing that, all those in favor of the motion uh, of the amendment, not the amendment, the motion that Mr. Matney stated on the MSIP, say aye. 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 Those opposed, like saying. Hearing none, the motion carries seven four. Sorry, my notes got in the wrong here. Uh, next item is purchase of public works uh, equipment coming from uh, public works. Mr. Craylin. At this time, I'd like to make a motion to, uh, to purchase a day cab truck, 75 yard dump trailer uh, to improve the efficiency uh, in which the city collects yard trimmings and manage and um, likely try, <clears throat> sorry, and um, transport outside the city. Okay, I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. And a second, Mr. Black. Any discussion? Mr. Craigland. <clears throat> just, uh, just wanted to comment that this uh, purchase should improve the efficiency of our collection of our yard waste uh, leaves throughout the year, approximately giving two hours per truck per day of uh, time that can be used in the picking up leaves or other materials. Um, however, we probably won't be here in time for this fall with the leaves, uh, but we'll be able to have it this time next year. Mr. Craven, any other discussions? King. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd also like to add um, what some folks in the audience like to hear. It's a projected um, $872,000 savings over 10 years. Sheely. 
waiting for a roar. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Shuler. Thank you, Ms. King. No other discussion. The motion before us is to approve the purchase of a day cab truck and a 75 yard dump trailer to improve the efficiency of the manner in which yard trimmings are collected, managed, and also transported within the city. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Here, none motion carries seven to zero. The item before us uh, is the acceptance of a donation for veterans. Uh, Commissioner Finance, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to make a motion that we accept a donation of $1,151 from Mr. Patrick from Mr. Patrick Schoolcraft for an engraved plaque in tribute to his late father, uh, U.S. Navy and Air Force veteran, Mr. Walter Schoolcraft. The plaque will be placed on a bench along the city's veteran memorial. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. That was in stereo. Oh, yes. Matney and Miss King. I love when they do stereo. Yeah, not often. No. Just kidding. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to accept the $1,151 donations from Mr. Schoolcraft or the engraved plaque in tribute to his late father, U.S. Navy and Air Force veteran, Mr. Schoolcraft, say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Hearing none, the motion carries 7 0. We do not have anything for committee of the whole. Back to public comment. No one signed up to speak on public comment. Would you like to? Didn't sign up to his council's pleasure that uh, Mr. Shalubi can speak to us. Absolutely. Come on, Come on down. down. <laughs> Make, sure he st Make sure he states his name and address. Mr. Matney said no. <laughs> Tommy Shalouli, 961 Fargo Street. I want to say that the audit seemed like it came out real good. I want to congratulate everyone that did it. It sounded real great. One of the things he mentioned I'd like to ask is that uh, the lease on your equipment is starting to be treated as a liability. It should, in my opinion, should have been done 100 years ago, or maybe it was. My question to this council is, do we have any lease equipment? Is there any plans to revisit that, saying there's no benefit as a company or a corporation to lease it? I mean, folks might look at it and say, yeah, it's better for us to just own it versus leasing it. And normally you'll find out that it's, it's better to own it. Not all the time, but sometimes it is. Most of the time it is. Leasing is nothing but a cover corporations to take that liability out. Now, this auditor is saying that they did away with that. So uh, I think that we need to re revisit our equipment that's been a lease. And maybe it's a good lease. I'm just voicing my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shirley. And if you have questions, get in touch with Mr. Matt and he can explain what we do or do not have currently on the books. A lot better than I can. Hearing none of that, council concerns. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Second. <laughs> uh, I would ask for one consideration that if uh, if it would be your pleasure to remember the family of our sports center uh, director, Miss Duffy, and the loss of her father today, uh, longtime city resident, Mr. Tommy Owens. So uh, keep the family in your prayers, if you would, please, in a tough two weeks. Thank you. Uh, anything else what I hear on, whoops, sorry. Is there anything on the line that we should know about? I always forget. No one has indicated that they would like to speak. Thank you, sir. What do I hear on the German? So moved. Motion, Ms. King, second. Second. Second, Mr. Freyland. All those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Watch me, Cindy, 755.